Ist ein Retrofit for Badge Sandwich Huge is worth it? Stay tuned! Welcome to our webinar. My name is Christine Odefer and I want to welcome you and uh, want to welcome you also our guest and our expert, Jose Garrido. So then let's start. Jose, it's your turn. Thank you so much, Christine. Hi, everybody. My name is uh, Jose Garrido. The tema for today is a retrofit for batch centrifugals worth it. And it's an interesting uh, question because many of you have already started with the uh, upgrade of your batch centrifugals. However, BMA had developed in the last uh, in the last years a new program of retrofit for batch centrifugals, which uh, goes far away from the traditional traditional concept of uh, retrofit. And for that reason, we want to explain to you the program of uh, retrofit for batch centrifugal of BMA. I have prepared the following overview for you regarding the, tem the temas that we that we are uh, talking today. First of all, we will uh, make a short introduction and we will describe the normal reasons to perform a retrofit in a batch centrifugal, but giving you as well new reasons to uh, retrofit to upgrade your batch centrifugals. After that, we will describe exactly the scope of supply in a retrofit project, giving you the options that you have to, 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 to improve even more the, the centrifuge. And at the end, we will summarize all the benefits of our uh, program of retrofit for batch centrifugals. Okay. Regarding the introduction, as we started to prepare this presentation, we wanted to give you an idea about the philosophy of our retrofit program. What you are saying is the cockpit of the Apollo 4. So let me say first, Apollo 4 was the first mission of this rocket from the NASA, from the NASA, uh, which was launched in 1967. As you can see, the cockpit of, of this rocket is pretty, pretty, pretty full of buttons, indicators, analog indicators. And if you can imagine, the pilot of this rocket has to be very carefully and reading a lot of, of inputs, analog inputs, to try and to, to, to drive this rocket. In the same way, BMA has as well an Apollo 4, and that was our G machines. As you can see, our cockpit, of course, is pretty easier com uh, compared to the, to the NASA. But as you can see, we have as well a lot of analog inputs and outputs, a, lo a lot of uh, indicators about strong, um, about uh, current uh, electrical parameters, about vibration. And it's a very good, uh, uh, it's a very good example about, about how in this time was had work the centrifugals. But the times goes very fast. And in the same way, the NASA has developed in the in the, the 2000s another rocket, another space uh, spacecraft. And that was the space shuttle. That was in the in the in the 80s. And as you can see, it's a pretty different, dif uh, different as the as the Apollo 4. We have more electrical, uh, more digital inputs, bigger displays, more autom automation in this rocket. And in the same way, BMA has another space shuttle. That was our B machines. What you can, you can see is uh, our first um, electronic LCD, OP17 uh, from, from Siemens. And in the right side, you will see the first touch screen that we implement in our B machines. And that was this uh, MTP 700 from Siemens as well. You can see we have the same development, a little bit more electronic, a little bit more automation, a little bit more easy to use for the, for the customer, more, more uh, automatic process in the centrifugals. And, but the, again, the times goes very fast and in this in this in this way, 
the NASA had created the Crew Dragon this year. And as you can see, it's, uh, it's even the pilot is like playing with the, with the fingers. They have less to do, to do uh, at the moment because everything, all the trajectories, everything is made by the computer, is made by the machine. And in the same way, we have as well such an improvement in our centrifuges. But you know what NASA can cannot do, but BMA can? What BMA can do is putting all the development of our crew dragon in the new, uh, in the old centrifuges for, for you. That means that we can take one of the G machines or B machine or B machines and put in all the new development that we are implementing in our A and our E1810. And that is a big difference. And that is exactly the philosophy of our <coughs> of our retrofit program. We will take an old machine and we will give all the improvement that we are using actually in our new centrifuges. And that is the philosophy of our retrofit programs. As you can see, uh, we have already uh, talked about the philosophy of our program. And now I would like to describe the normal reasons and new reasons for a retrofit. Because as I told you, we will put a lot of more information, a lot of more, more automation, more sensors, more electronic. We will put a new, uh, a new um, functionality in your machines. For that reason, you know already some normal um, reasons for a retrofit. For example, of obsolescence of, of electrical parts. Everybody knows we have already a frequency converter in our machine, but it is pretty old and then we don't get more uh, spare parts and we have a trouble. In one moment, this uh, frequency converter stops to work and what can we do? The new frequency converter cannot uh, communicate with the, with the new uh, protocols, information communication uh, protocols of the new PLCs. And for that reason, it's not so easy to put a new frequency converter with a very, very old PLC. And that is one of the most common uh, reasons of our retrofit. Another reason is that the control system is easy, too old for the new requirements in your sugar mill. For, for example, we cannot connect the old machines in, in our DCS system. We have no control. We don't know exactly what is the quality of this, of this machine, what is the performance of this machine. We cannot see the trends of the of the machine. So that is a normal, normal reason for a rate of it. And a third one, it's broken parts. We work very close together with the uh, service department and we get maybe three times per week some requests from customers that they have broken the, the old HMI, let me see, then uh, MTP uh, 700, and they don't get new spare parts. And for that reason, they need, when the display is broken, they need a new display, and it's not easy to, to find a, such an old part. But as I told you, because we are putting all our development of the new centrifugals in our retrofit, we can give you new reasons to perform a retrofit in your centrifugals. And that's our Sorry. Higher production requirements. OK, imagine that you have, I don't know, a bank of centrifugals of eight, 10 centrifugals, and five of them are pretty old. And you want to, uh, to uh, process more sugar. You need new centrifugals. But what happens if, if we can tell you, OK, you have your five old centrifugals in a very good mechanical shape, and we can make a retrofit, giving a new possibility to improve the capacity of these uh, of these centrifugals. We can improve the capacity from 18 cyclus per, per hour to 20, 21, depending on your needs. That is a new reason for a retrofit, retrofit for you. 
Another one is the energy, uh, energy efficiency. For example, uh, my last webinar were uh, regarding the sequencing. This uh, algorithm to, which can uh, improve and reduce the energy uh, energy consumption peaks in your bank centrifugals. But that is not possible with all machines which has, for example, a very old uh, communications per PLC where I cannot put this kind of algorithms. Or the motor in your old centrifugal is very old and the effic uh, energy efficiency of this motor is not 100% what you want. That is another uh, reason for a rate of it. Another reason could be the, uh, to provide to all the bank, all the centrifugals, the same software, the same functionality. So you don't need to have different operators working in different machines and you can uh, reduce a little bit um, the organization of this department. OK, that is uh, again the new and old reasons of our retrofit and summarizing what BMA are doing with the retrofit program is for one manual or uh, analog process to an automated one. <coughs> Sorry. With this retrofit, you will win in more efficiency, more safety and quality of your end product. What you are saying in the in the slides are the HMI or this control software for batch centrifugals and continuous centrifugals. Because of course, BMA are retrofitting is retrofitting as well the continuous centrifugals. Today we are more focused in the in the batch, but um, I will uh, uh, I will uh, tell you a little bit about the county centrifugals when we were talking about the architecture in a couple of minutes. And of course, is uh, available to to make retrofits in continuous centrifugals. Okay, then the meaning of the retrofit that will be the uh, starting to describe the scope of supply of our program. The very first first think that we need is an old BMA machine. The new, uh, the old BMA machine will be equipped with new electric cabinets and sensors. Of course, new centrifuge uh, software control, the same software that our E1810 is using, the same one. We have a new safety concept so that your old centrifuge, G centrifuge or B centrifuge will work perfectly safe for the machine and for the operator. Of course, we will uh, improve uh, your machine with our sensor DINFAS FS, which uh, allows the machine to make an automated load, improving the, um, the, the charge and giving the maximal performance for your centrifuge. And of course, a comfortable and intuitive HMI with our new 12 sol uh, uh, touch screen. Of course, we will give the all the we will give the old machines the possibility to be connected to our platform Smart for Sugar. And we will talk a little bit about the smart monitoring. And this is a very interesting thing because your old centrifugal uh, will be equipped with all, all, all the, the new, the new, um, the new development from BMA, doing the performance almost the same as I, as I'm, as one, one E eighteen eighteen ten. I say always the same because mechanically there will be some differences. For example, the the um, but uh, the, the what is the name of the Aufräumer? Sorry for that. <laughs> if you understand the the, the name for of Aufräumer, Aufräumer, it's the 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 pallet which are which are we are using to to get all the all the sugar. In the new ones, we have a big one. In the old machines, is a 
a, a small one which, which go in this direction and then goes down. For that reason, the, the times of performance will be a little bit different, but only about the, uh, only about the mechanic. You, you have kind the of word? A, kind of a cleaner you mentioned. Okay, uh, I don't know. I, I hope that you understand what what are, I I mean, uh, or we can give me the the word in in, in the <laughs> chat, and I will do a tattoo uh, for the next time. Okay, thank you. Of course, we have some options. For example, the smart sequencing. Uh, when we perform a retrofit, we are able to improve the performance of the World Bank using our new algorithm, a smart sequencing. You are invited in our YouTube channel to see our webinar uh, according this this tema. Okay, let's we go further. Do, we do have the answer to uh, okay. the word um, Who that was, was missing. Uh, um, it was Sean, and it's called uh, the plow. The the plow. The plow. Thank you, Sean. Uh, I owe you a beer next time. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Go go far away. Let me explain a little bit the architecture from our uh, retrofits. What we are saying right, right now is the, the basic concept, the architecture of a very normal um, retrofit for a one batch centrifuge. What we are using is more or less um, giving the architecture for a decentralized uh, control system. That means I have the frequency converter, the switch gear will, the, will be the cabinet where the, where the PLC lives. And then I have in the machine, in the local centrifugal that you can see, a lot of, of new sensors. All these new sensors will be wired to a terminal box and the terminal box will be connected with, uh, with the PLC using only one profinet cable. That means for you to repair and maintenance is pretty, pretty easy. You have to control, for example, the, the cables of your sensors that are uh, really uh, that are in good shape to, till the terminal box. And after that, we have only one wire gain, going directly to the operator panel, switch gear, and frequency converter. Of course, our uh, PLC, which can be, of course, uh, like the like always, Siemens, uh, Allen Brantley, and Schneider. Uh, we will have a communication processor to go directly to the control system, to the DCS, for example. If you, go, if you wanted to have some trends and some uh, visualization in your DCS system, we will give you the um, possibility. As, we, as I told you, we have the sequencing that would be the, our, our smart sequencing, which is another control software would be um, with be, will be uh, improving the, the performance of the World Bank and will be an, uh, in, an, uh, in, an, um, in front of all the centrifuges. The same concept is for the continuous centrifuges. As you can see, we will, it's uh, pretty easier because a uh, centrifugal is easier than a, as a batch centrifuge. And what we are doing here is in the same way, giving you a new HMI um, seven, uh, seven, uh, seven tall, uh, seven inches uh, uh, touch screen with a new PLC, the new PLC uh, the, of the new generation. In the same case, we have Profinet to uh, is the protocol of communication between all the sensors and the and the PLC. And what we are doing is giving you the possibility to, to, to improve uh, using a frequency converter for your, for your <coughs> continuous machine or the new uh, starters, uh, uh, soft starters from, from Siemens or Allen Brandley. Um, we make an automatic loop for the, for the addition of mass acute uh, according to the, to the current of the, of the motor. We improve the algorithm of the vapor to, to make our, our um, output of our centrifuge more, more um, easy to be, to be handled after that. And we don't have crystallization in our, in, in our syrup of the, of the centrifugals. This uh, loop 
of addition of vapor according to the amount of mass acute uh, will be automatic uh, perform and improve through our algorithm we have uh, at the same time a new algorithm for the magnetizer and uh, of course connection of the dcs that was uh, all that i wanted to say about the the country safety figures we go directly further with our batch centrifuges. That was, as I told you, the concept of the architecture of a PLC. But many of you are using DCS systems and you are not more interested to put a PLC in each centrifuge. And for that reason, we have a new architecture for you and that would be the architecture, in a, uh, the architecture of a DCS system. Let me, let me explain a little bit how, how it works, everything. You, we have three rooms. On top, we have the central control room, room where all the operators with the, uh, with, the, with the screens are controlling the functionality of the wall fabric, fabric. We have the electrical room or the MCC, motor control room, and there will be uh, full of the M uh, frequency converter and the new architecture for such a, such a, uh, customers is following. For example, we have here for each two centrifuges only one uh, HMI, so the, the user can change the, the visualization from one machine, machine to the other. Of course, we have a couple of, of buttons in, in, on the field, on the centrifugals, for example, the reset and, and, and emergency stop. Uh, absolutely. And what we have here is the terminal box where all the, the sensors for each centrifugals will be connected over there. Here in the middle, what we have is the normal uh, CPUs. On, on top of the CPUs are the servers. Of course, we are, we are observing <coughs> some redundancies like, like you are using. This uh, architecture is available, of course, from PCS7 of, uh, of Siemens and as well for um, plant PIX of Alan Bradley. So, those are the architectures that we can give you. As you can see, we are able to adapt the functional, the old machines to the newest technology, technology available at the moment. And I think it's pretty, pretty interesting. Okay, let us uh, talk uh, further about our scope of supply. The very first uh, thing that we are using, okay, I, I am going uh, uh, to explain the normal PLC architecture because I think it's the, the simplest and at the moment is the, the, most, the most requested. If you have any other uh, questions regarding the DCS architecture, please don't hesitate to contact us right in, in the chat and we will answer you. Okay, the cabinet. As you can see, we, can, uh, we have a new electrical cabinet where we are putting the new uh, PLC for your centrifuge and this, uh, we have a new newest wiring system. Of course, all the, all the plans will be made with a CAD software. In this case, is the wiring diagram, diagram E-Plan P8, what we are using. And it's very interesting because we can generate uh, 3D models of, of, of all our cabinets. That means if you have um, less place for your cabinets in your control room, then we can put the cabinets together and take in account of the, of the problem of the, of the place that you have. That is the, the, the point that we are talking about, the 3D cabinet construction. And of course, because we are using the newest technology of Siemens, of Allen Brandley, of ABB, of uh, Schneider, we are, you will have the warranty of spare parts for the next 20 years. And that's a very good thing. As you can see in the other, in the other picture, we have a terminal blocks with this uh, push in technology. That means that all the wiring uh, troubleshooting um, repair will be pretty pretty easy at the moment. At the right now, it's not uh, it's not uh, needed to even to use a screwdriver to make some reparation 
what I think it's it's pretty pretty amazing. Okay, regarding the operator panel and the terminal box. As I told you, the terminal box is not very spectacular. Uh, we have a, a terminal box is the is a um, is a place where all the wiring of all our new sensor will be connected, and from this this point, as I told you, we will uh, go only with one cable, and for that reason, it's, it's pretty simple. This uh, terminal box will be hide in the in the back of the centrifuge normally, and all the cables will be there. And from this point, we have all, all, all the troubleshooting pretty, pretty easier because the cable will be shorter and uh, finding where is the problem will be, will be very, very easy. The operator panel is uh, this metallic box where our HMI will be, will be uh, assembled. assembled. Um, Regarding the uh, operator panel, I have to say that we are giving this operator panel an uh, articulated arm so that we, you can put the operator panel and the HMI uh, ergonomically as you want, moving in the, in the higher and the orientation. And of course, as you can see, we have a new, a new uh, graphic user interface in our, in our software pretty uh, nice i have to say and this software is as i told you the same software that we are using in the new machines so the functionality will be always the same for all your centrifuges and that's uh, and that's uh, another advantage we have talked at the beginning about our safety concept the safety concept to give you a definition is, is pretty simple. We want to give you the maximal security in the operation of the centrifuge. As you know, the centrifuge is a <clears throat> dangerous machine when something goes wrong because we have a lot of energy. The basket is uh, um, turning around 1000 RPMs and that means that we have more or less the same energy like in a Formula One car. And that means when something goes wrong, it's very dangerous for the machine and for the operator. And that is exactly the point of our new safety concept. Give you the maximal security in the operation of the centrifuges. For that reason, what we are doing is giving the machines new sensors to control the electrical parameters who can be uh, risky in the operation. And that are, for example, a redundant vibration sensor. I have to say that all the sensors will have, uh, will be uh, replicated. Uh, we can have redundant sensors, so two sensors, or we can have one sensor, sensor with two communication channels, channels, so that we have the security that when one cable it's uh, it's broken we have the functionality at the same time and we are performing all the all the measuring and in real time and it's running uh, without uh, interference of the operator so let me uh, define the rest of the sensors that we are putting in the in the machine we have as i as i said uh, the redundant vibration set vibration sensor two sensors to controlling uh, the speed of our motor, and we will perform uh, we will perform in real time comparison between the real uh, speed of our motor and the uh, speed which is uh, given from the frequency converter, so that we don't have any deviation in this in this in this uh, in these parameters. We have two new oscillation sensors because uh, the oscillation is again a very a very important uh, physical parameter in our centrifuges we have of course a uh, switch con to control that we have enough pneumatic uh, pneumatic uh, air pressure in our main switch in our main circuit and of course controlling uh, in real time the pressure in our brake so that we are 100% sure that if we have to use the brake, the brake will work. If we have any, any problem of 
of, of these important, important um, physical magnitudes, the machine will be stopped automatically, giving you the possibility to repair one of these of these sensors before an accident uh, can occur. And that is our concept of safety. This one is one of my of my favorite uh, sensors that we are putting in our centrifuges is the DINFAS FS. And as everybody of you know, uh, this sensor is um, uh, what they are doing is uh, using radar te technology. We are measuring the layer thickness of our mass acute, as you can see in our in our software. That's that is, that is uh, as well important how easy is now the DreamFast FS to be configured. This is the uh, one of the advantage of our third uh, series, this new software, and very easy to, uh, to configure, to set up. As I tell you, DreamFast FS is a sensor which will perform, will give you the guarantee to perform automatic load, improving and maximizing the capacity of the centrifuge. How it works? Very simple. We have the switch point. For example, uh, we will see the 25% and the layer thickness is set to a 76%. Of course, this is a demo, but in the in the real life, the functionality of a DIMFAS FS is like that. That is, I have to say, that is one of our, um, it's a demo for our Smart Monitoring Pro. And what we are saying is the, is the capacity, the load capacity in different uh, moments of our centrifuge. This information you can get directly in your, in your mobile phone. But let us take a look what is going on here. As you can see at the beginning, we have more or less 80%. And what we are doing is with this sensor for its iteration, for its cycle, we are measuring how many capacity, how many mass acute, how thick is the mass acute layer in the basket. And we are started with a 80% and we are going, as you can see, our algorithm is improving because one of the, of the wonderful things of this sensor is that with this sensor you, you will be avoid overfilling. The sensor is there as well to give automatically the amount of, 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 of washing water to your mass acute according to the, to the load of the centrifuge. Because it's not the same to have a basket full in the 96% as in the 50%. And if you are giving the same amount of water, you are, uh, you are uh, losing a lot of crystal a lot of sugar. And that is what our automatic load makes. It improves and maximizes the capacity of your, of your centrifuge and it gives automatically and a smart, in a, a smart way the amount of, wash, of washing water to your mass acute. So you have a perfect and continuous uh, quality continuous in your end product, in your sugar. As you can see, the capacity of, of, the, of our centrifuges goes around 95%, 95% in each cyclus. That means a lot of improvement, fill, uh, many more uh, capacity or uh, processing capacity. Okay, that was the scope of supply. Very normal. What is the normal scope of supply for a retrofit uh, project, but of course we have a couple of option, options for, do, for you. The first option are the drives. As I told you, we have the possibility to give your old machine, the, actually is running 16 cycles per, per hour, improving the capacity of this, of this uh, centrifuge, given, I don't know, what you need. If you have a, a increment of production, we can, our engineers can calculate exactly how many cycles you need in each centrifuge, giving you 
the pair of motor and frequency converter according to this new performance. That means that we are not giving you as many other, uh, many, many other uh, companies the biggest motor and the biggest uh, frequency converter. That's not our philosophy. We are calculating exactly the, the, the cyclus, as you can see here. We give you exactly what is the, uh, the time of acceleration, what is the time of the, of the charge that we can achieve with this uh, new drive, giving you the smallest motor and frequency converter to achieve your goal. And that's, again, a very interesting uh, a very interesting point. We are not giving, okay, buy the biggest one. We are calculating exactly what you what do you need to give you exactly the the, the part of uh, of drives that your centrifuge uh, needs. As you can see, we have uh, here in the presentation a B1300, and we can give a uh, 25 charts per hour with this couple of uh, of drives that we are selected for that customer. Okay, other options. We have talked a little bit about the DIMFAS FS and the importance of this sensor in our machines. For a perfect, uh, for a perfect uh, functionality of the DIMFAS, sometimes we need to change the old feeding valve, the butterfly valve, the, which is in front uh, also which is feeding our centrifuge. Why? Because at the beginning we have used another another kind of, of valve which is open only uh, a quarter, 25%. Uh, and that, of course, will, will work our DIMFAS FS, but the control loop will not be uh, suitable, will, will be not so good as, as, as it should be. For that reason, another option, if you have uh, the old feeding bulb is putting a new uh, butterfly bulb with a positioner with analog. We are using normally 420 milliamps to communications so that the DIMFAS can perform the fine adjust and giving you the possibility to go to the 95-96% of uh, capacity in your, in your basket. <coughs> Another option um, is the connection of our uh, industry uh, 4.0 uh, uh, smart for sugar and what you are saying is one of our our gateway from from that purpose so that as christine uh, told us uh, in our last webinar is uh, possible to see the performance of your centrifuge in your uh, mobile phone but right now we are main we are doing a little bit uh, special in, in this case and is for for the next uh, uh, retrofit projects we will give you the possibility to test the smart monitoring for one year without cost. That means you buy a, uh, a retrofit for, uh, for your centrifuge and we will give you the possibility to, to open the door to the industry 4.0 to a centrifuge maybe 20 years old, 30 years old. The one year power subscription means that you will have the possibility to, to uh, observe eight machines online. You will have six uh, users going at the same time uh, online and, and cooking the performance of the, of the machines. I put plus one because one of the of the user will be will be the administrator who makes all the all the uh, user user uh, management and and so on. So at the end we have seven users, which is which who can uh, see the performance uh, in the web, uh, in the mobile phone, in the tablet automatically. As you can see in the picture, which is the one of the of the dashboard from, from our smart monitoring. We will give you KPI for each machine, but not only KPI for the, for the machines, so that you can see how many sugar you are doing, how many, 
how many usage are you uh, are you having with each machine we are giving you recommendations for the improvement and we uh, we will give you uh, immediately help for the troubleshooting so smart monitoring is not only one uh, tool to see what is going on in your uh, centrifuge it's a tool to help you to maximize the performance of the centrifuge and to help in, in the maintenance and the troubleshooting. Okay, I am more or less uh, at the end of my presentation. What say the time? Oh, pretty, pretty good. Um, that is the summarizing of our, of our um, retrofit program and I will describe you the benefits at a glance. Yeah? First of all, I have to say that the BMA retrofit program is more than uh, give your old centrifuge a new job uh, uh, because we are improving the performance of this centrifuge. We are giving to your old centrifuge all the new development of BMA and that gives your old centrifuge a lot of possibilities to uh, work according the request of nowadays. Of course, we will get a new control hardware, a new PLC, or uh, new um, CPUs and, and control possibilities. If we are talking about DCS architecture, you will have the security to have a spare parts for more than 20 years, but uh, because what we are using right now is the state of the art technology from all our part, uh, technology technologic par partners like Siemens or or Allen Brandley, and of course the software capabilities. A new so control software, very intuitive, very easy to use, and according according to the request uh, today. We have talked a little bit about our safety concept. We will give your old centrifugal the most important security features that we are improving that we are using in our centrifuges and for that reason you will you can sleep well because the centrifuge will be safe for itself and for the operator better process control as we talk to you we are not talking only to put a new electronic to put a new hmi we are giving you the possibility to improve the process the process, the sewer process of these old machines, so that we can give more capaci capacity if we are adding drives in our scope of supply. And we are giving you, of course, this automatic load and this automatic washing of the, of the mass acute, which is a very, very nice feature. Better performance, of course, given the drives, uh, drives uh, packages, better uh, energy efficiency because uh, we are using of course only ES3 motors and frequency converters and all the new possibilities of architectures and if you have any other kind of concern we are an engineering we are open to talk to you and uh, giving you a key solution for your special needs and of course a small uh, present for you. In the next year, you will see your retrofitted centrifugals in the smart monitoring professional pro uh, abundant, and that is very, very interesting as well. And I have to say, I am ready for today. Thank you for for your attention. Thank you, Jose, for this presentation. Um, I think it was uh, kind of smart to compare our retrofit with the another uh, equipment. And now it's time to start with the Q&A session. Um, we got some questions um, in the chat too. So then let's start with the first one. Um, the first one is, uh, can this retrofit be fitted in our present BMA 18th centrifugal for refined mass acute? For the 18, 18th? 18th then, yeah. So normally, uh, what is exactly what they want to do with the, with the, with the 18th then? I think the question is um, they want to refine the mass acute. So I think uh, so. Actually, the uh, we will 
normally it's it's a, it's not a retrofit i think what what you actually need because because uh, as i told you we will put the same equipment as in the e 1810 uh, but but what we can can do is of course changing a little bit the software that you actually 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 uh, which is actually running in your centrifuge uh, um, to give you the possibility to refine better the, the sugar that you have. Please write us uh, an email or give you, give me please your your telephone number and, and then we can we can talk exactly what are your needs because uh, here is a little bit uh, different difficult to understand exactly what do you mean with refine and better your 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 mass acute your sewer. Um, the next one could be an extension for the first question. Could be from another one because uh, there's no no name in it. Um, at Farron Sugar Mills, BMA 1810 motor taken temperature and tripped at 110 OC. We made extra arrangement for cool air. Is it due to low RPM? 765 RPM motor. Let me read it directly because yeah. <laughs> just have a look at mine. I think that you have some troubles with your with your with your motor. So the motor is, is running slowly that as you wanted for that reason you are getting more more temperature. I would like to know exactly what is the, the configure of your frequency converter and of your of your motor and and doing of course the cooling air for to, to cooling down the, the temperature of the motor it's 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 always good but we should take a look exactly what is going on what what are you running what do you say 600 er, 765 uh, yeah. that's uh, really if if we are talking about the 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 acceleration and the and the centrifuge uh, station in your cyclos 760 is it's a it's a low. Please write me uh, an an email, and then we will take uh, take a look uh, a little bit with a little bit more more calm. Thank you. So we will provide you um, the email address uh, where you can address um, the question again, and then uh, you will get an um, answer as soon as possible from us. Um, I do have two more questions to answering right now. So um, you told us about the scope. Uh, can I also choose only some parts from the retrofit or is it a whole package? So it is, that's a good, a good question. Uh, and it's depending on what parts you want to, to skip. For example, uh, I'm, I have not uh, no problems, for example, with the with the terminal box or the with the operator panel. This articulated arm, if the arm in your oil centrifuge is working properly, I don't have uh, any 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 question of that. Of course, for example, with the new uh, with the new uh, safety sensors, that the answer is no. The safety sensors is a very important part of the of the functionality of this uh, of the centrifuge and for that reason we need to put all these sensors there because we want to guarantee you the the, the most safety uh, um, functionality in your centrifuge but as i told you operator panel maybe the um, the arm and of course the dimfas fs if you don't want to have it it's a pity because you will lose a lot of a lot of, of performance but uh, it, it can be escaped as well yeah okay so there's another one in the chat right now do you have any information for continuous centrifuges for the affination uh, yes we have some some information of that please the, write down your your email, and I will do, I will send you all the all the the capacities of what we are doing in the in the conti in the continuous centrifuge to improve the affination. Yeah. Okay, so I think the most important question uh, from all the um, audience um, on the screens is how much does a retrofit cost? So what are the oh God, that's, that's a very good question. <laughs> yeah. Okay, let me see if we are talking about the uh, price of a new centrifuge. Of course, it's depending of the of the exactly configuration of your retrofit. If we are not using any option at all, only the normal standard packet, I will say the price of a retrofit from BMA is around 15 and 20 percent of the price of a new machine. Mm -hmm. If we are using, for example, if we are giving you a new motor and a new frequency converter, of course, those parts are very, very expensive. 
And in this way, I will say between 30 and 40% of the price of a new centrifuge is the price of a complete retrofit with a drive package. But always it's depending of the of the of the size of the motors, yeah. But almost 30, 40% of the price of a new machine. Last but not least, um, the last question um, I got in here is um, how long does it take to uh, do a retrofit on my equipment? Another good question. Very good. Um, again, it depends of, of the of the configuration. If we are buying or providing motor and frequency converter, those parts have always between 11 and 13 weeks uh, delivery time. I'm talking in Inco terms FCA here Germany because that's the time that I need to get the, the motors and for that or, or the frequency converter. And at the same time, we can we perform all the all the cabinets electrical. So I would say between 11 and 13 weeks, we can have all the all the all the electrical parts, all the sensor given you in FCA, FCA Germany. Of course, depending if you are living in Asia or you are in Europe, then you have to to add the transport time. Okay, thank you so much. This was the last question uh, we got from you. Um, it was a lot of fun. Thank you, Jose. I hope it was the same thank for you. you. Yes, yes. Uh, thank you also for the audience that you have been joining us today. Uh, we are looking forward to see you next time on the next webinar. So then please stay healthy and stay safe. Um, see you next time. <laughs>